Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're working in Photoshop and we're going to turn a sketch into a series of paths and we're going to do it in such a way that we could save it as an SVG file and then use it as a cutting guide. For example, using it as a cutting guide for a Cricut machine. So before we get started, I want to tell you where you can find additional training of mine. I have hundreds of classes at Skillshare and I have a coupon in the description below which includes an offer at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and mine's often better. If you sign up for Skillshare you'll get access to thousands of classes there including over 200 of mine. Now I'm also an Illustrator trainer and I have a series of Illustrator courses too at Udemy. In the description below are coupon links for all of those courses and again my coupon prices are at least as good as anything that Udemy can offer and often even better. Please feel free to share these coupons with your family and friends. So back to Photoshop and I have a sketch here of a caravan. Now this sketch was not designed as a sketch for a cutting guide. I just got it out of my sketchbook. So let's look and see how we might turn this into a caravan shape that we could use as a cutting design. Now I've got the image open inside Photoshop. I've got the background layer locked down. I'm going to build this as a series of shapes and not paths per se. The reason for this is that paths in Photoshop basically suck and once you start trying to subtract things from each other, subtract paths from other paths, Photoshop just really spits the dummy and really, really makes it difficult. But if you use shapes, things will work out a lot better. So I'm going to the pen tool and I'm going to make sure that this is set to shape and not path. That's really, really critical. And then we're going to draw every one of the shapes that we want to either add or subtract as separate paths. And that way it's going to work just fine. So I'm going to select no fill at all because I want to be able to see the image as I'm drawing. And I'm going to set a stroke color. So I'm going to start with red. And basically I'm going to go around my image. To start off with, I'm going to create the path that is the basic caravan shape. So all I'm doing is clicking and dragging. If I wanted a point, a sharp point, I would just click, but all of these lines are soft curves. And so I'm just clicking and dragging as I'm going. Now you can finesse this path. It is actually a path. It's not a shape, even though we've selected shape here, we're actually drawing out a path. So if you want to edit this, you can do it later on or you can do it as you go. I prefer to get it sort of pretty near down and then go and tidy it up like this is going to be a tidy up job because it's not curved correctly. So I've just made that initial path. Now let's go to the direct selection tool and I need to select this point because this is what's causing this bump here. So I'm just going to shorten this handle a little bit and that will add a better curve in here. So now I can go around and just make sure that I've got the curves the way I want them to look. Now this is a sketch and I'm creating a cutting shape from it. I'm more concerned with making a nice cutting shape than I am with actually making the line go perfectly around this sketch because that's not what it's all about. At any stage I can turn on and turn off the background so that I can just see what the image really looks like. Now at this point I might go and add a layer beneath everything. So I'm going to turn that background layer into a regular layer, add it above my empty layer and I'm going to fill my empty layer with white. Because white is my foreground color I can press Alt Backspace Option Delete on the Mac to fill it with white. Now when I turn this on and off, I've got a white background to work against instead of transparency. It's just a little bit easier. So I'm seeing a slight bump in my shape here. If I want to edit it, I'll go back and select the shape layer, go and select the point or the anchor that's causing that bump and just round it off. Click back on this layer, just test that everything looks all right. I'm going to turn my caravan back on because I want to continue with the next shape. Now every single one of these shapes is going to go on its own layer and that's really, really important because it's going to make it easier for us to add and subtract these later on. So I'm still working in the shape mode. This time I'm going to choose a different color so it's going to be easier to see in a minute and I'm going to do the wheel. Now I'm not concerned with starting the wheel where the caravan is because all I'm going to do in a minute 
is join these two shapes together. So I'm just going to make the wheel any old shape. It doesn't really matter except the area that's underneath the caravan. So that's looking pretty good to me. Let's just move it into position though so we can see it. So there's my wheel done. Let's go and again go to the pen tool. Again choose a different colour. And this time I'm going to select around the window here in the caravan. So I'm just going to make a sort of circular shape here. And again I've gone too far with my shape so I'm just going to round that off a little bit. Let's turn off the tracing image that we're using here and just double check that everything looks all right. Concerned about this, concerned about this, concerned about the overall shape, not worried about the wheel here at all. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go and choose another color. I've got these two pieces are both blue. It doesn't really matter. It just matters that they're a different color to the base of the caravan. So let's go and get a sort of purple color. I'm going to trace the door next. With this I'm going to start in the middle of the top of the door with a small click and drag because I have to make it round this corner and it's quite a steep corner. So just little clicks and drags will be sufficient for this. And then we'll just check and see what it looks like. Well it looks just fine so I'm happy with that. I'm going to just click away from everything so that I've got it deselected, nothing selected. Now I can't cut this circle out later on because what I'm going to do is make the caravan sort of black so that will be my cut out shape. I'm going to cut out the door so effectively that's going to be a hole. So I can't add this little shape in here because it's not going to cut. But I could make a sort of door handle and that's what I'm going to do. Let's go and get the pen tool. Let's add a brand new layer so I can change colors here. Let's go and get a sort of orange color and I'm going to draw out a door handle here. So I'm going to click here and just make a shape for the door handle. Now I'm not concerned about the area of the door handle that's here because that's not actually going to be part of the final shape. It's the area that's in here that is of concern to me. So I'm just going to look and see how it looks and it's looking fine. It should be fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is the trailer here. So let's add a brand new layer and let's go and create the trailer shape. So again, let's choose a different color. Now for my trailer, I'm just going to do the hook. So I'm going to come out here. I'm going to come round to a sort of loop here and then all the way back into the trailer. And I'm just going to finish off over the starting position. So let's have a look and see what this shape looks like. So the only other shape I want is this wheel well and because I want it to be a cutout out of the final design I'm going to show you how I'm going to design it. So a brand new layer and let's go and get a different color here for the wheel well. I'm going to use a lighter pink. I'm also going to zoom in here so I can see this area of the image much better. So I'm using the zoom tool then I'm holding the space bar so I can move it into position. So with the pen tool I'm going to start over here. I don't want to intersect with the actual caravan body but I'm just going to add my shape for my wheel well around here. Now I'm going to hold down the alt key on a PC. It would be option on a Mac so I can swing this handle around so I can get a start on a nice shape here. So I want to head back in the direction I came from. And this is going to be a cutout so I want this to look pretty good. And once I've made the shape I'm going to the direct selection tool just to perfect this path and just make sure that I've got a pleasing shape for my wheel cutout. And that's looking pretty good as well. So now that I've got all my shapes, I would at this point save this just so that you've got all the elements that you need. And then we're going to start putting it together. So in terms of putting it together, first of all, I'm going to turn off my tracing image so I can look at the image itself. I'm concerned to add everything to the actual outline. So I'm going to locate the shape layer that has the outline of the caravan on it. And that's this one here. So I'm going to call that caravan. 
And next up, I'm going to look out for the window here because I want to cut that out of the caravan. So let's go and see where the window is. Well, it's on this layer here. So I'm going to target this layer that has the window on it. I'm going to select the path selection tool. So I've got the path here selected and I'm going to choose edit and then copy. So I've copied this path to the Windows clipboard and now I'm going to turn off that layer because I don't want to be able to see it. I'm going to the caravan layer and I'm going to paste this in with edit and then paste. Now that pastes that particular shape into the caravan and what I want to do is I want to subtract this shape from the caravan. So up here on the toolbar is an option which at the moment says combine shapes. We don't want to combine shapes, we want to subtract. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select subtract front shape and that's going to subtract this shape from the back one. And if we open up and keep an eye on the paths palette, we should see what we've got. We've got a caravan shape and we've got the window that's cut out of it. And when you see that, you know you've got exactly what you want. And so you'll come back here and choose Merge Shape Components. And that merges these two components on this layer into exactly what you want it to look like. And we're going to do this piece by piece. So now that we've taken out the window, we're going to take out the door. So let's go and locate the shape layer that is the door, and that's this one here. So with the Pass Selection tool, we're going to make sure that we've got this door pass selected, and we'll choose Edit and then Copy. So that's copied to the clipboard. Now we're going to turn that layer off. And now we'll go back to the Caravan layer because we want to paste this in. So we'll choose Edit and then Paste. Having pasted it onto this layer, you can see right now it's about to be added and that's not what we want. We want to cut it out. So let's go to our little drop down here and let's choose Subtract Front Shape. Have a look in the Paths palette, make sure that it looks the way we want it to look, which it does. And so we'll go back here and choose Merge Shape Components. And now we've got our shape being built up as we go. Well, let's have a look at the door handle here. This is the door handle shape layer. So I'm going to target that layer. I'm going to the Path Selection tool. I'm going to make sure that my path is selected. I'll copy it, edit, and then copy. I'll turn it off and we'll go back to the caravan that we're building up here and I'll choose Edit and then Paste. Now I want this to be added because I wanted to have a piece that sort of sticks out into the doorway and suggests a door handle. So I'm happy to use Combine Shapes and I'll just choose Merge Shape Components. And so now this is what the door to the caravan looks like. The next piece we'll look at is the front of the caravan here, the sort of stick out the front. So let's go and select that path. Let's copy it. We'll go back to the caravan layer. I'm going to turn that layer off. I'm going to paste it in with edit and then paste. And again, we want to add this. So make sure that combine shapes is selected and then we'll merge shape components so that my caravan now has the sort of pulling bracket out the front. So now let's go and find this wheel. For my wheel, I gave myself some options, but I think I'm just going to add it to the caravan. I could have just extended my path to go around the wheel. I didn't, so I'm going to add it in now. So I'll select over the shape and copy it. I'll turn the wheel off, go back to the caravan that I'm building here. I'll paste the wheel in. And then I want to add it, so I'll go here to Merge Shape Components so that we're merging it into the caravan itself. And we've got one more piece to deal with right now, and that is this wheel arch. So let's go back to the wheel arch. Let's select it and copy it. Turn the layer off, go back to the caravan layer and paste it in. This one we need to subtract, so we need to make sure that we're subtracting the front shape so we've got a hole in there. It's a little difficult to see this in the caravan shape, but we know the process. We know we want to subtract it, so we'll select Subtract Front Shape and then we'll choose Merge Shape Components. Now probably I would opt to add a small wheel element in here, but let's call this done at this stage. So we'll go back to this caravan layer and let's turn the stroke off. 
and we want to add a fill. So I'm going to select the fill and I'm going to choose a black color. And this is what my caravan shape is going to look like. This is what it's going to look like as an SVG file. But because we're in Photoshop and because shapes can be really handy in Photoshop, before I leave Photoshop, I'm going to choose Edit and Define Custom Shape. I'm just going to save this as a caravan shape. So I could use this inside Photoshop at any time. But to use it as a Cricut file, for example, an SVG file that we can use as a cutting guide, we're going to have to save this as a SVG file. We're going to have to export it as an SVG file. I'll choose File and then Export and we'll choose Export As. From the Export As dialog, we'll select SVG. There are a whole lot of options here. SVG is what we need for a Cricut file. Now we can select an image size if we want to scale it up or down. We could do that at this stage. I don't want to. I'm quite happy with it at this size. So I'll just select Export All. And onto the desktop, I'm just going to call this Caravan. And I'll click Save. Now, just a word of warning, if this were really going to be used as a Cricut file, I think I would make this stem a whole lot wider. It's going to be a really narrow cut. It's probably way too narrow of a cut. So I would improve that as well before I created my final version. But for now, we're just looking at the principles involved. So let's go to the Cricut Design Space online. And I have a brand new project selected here. I'll click on Upload. I'll click Upload Image and I'll go and browse for my image. Now my image is on my desktop, so let's just go to the desktop. Let's pick up the caravan image and click Open. Now I'm getting a message that my SVG file contained an embedded image that's not going to show up and that's fine. I just want the caravan so I can just click OK. So this is the caravan path here. It looks just fine. I'll click Save. And now we'll go and use it inside the Cricut Studio. And here it is. I like to use the Cricut Studio because it's a good way of testing on the computer that everything's working as expected. And of course, I can go straight back to Photoshop if I want to make some edits to this image. I can edit it in a couple of ways. I can add things to it exactly the same way as we did previously. Just add a shape layer with the shape you want to use and then either add it or subtract it from the shape. But you can also edit these points because this is a path. So I could come in here and just locate the points down here and I could move this. And this will give me a thicker area here. Now for the wheel well, I want to make a brand new shape. So I'll create a brand new layer. I'll go to the pen tool. I've got my stroke here, but right now my caravan is above, so it's going to be hard to see. So let's just go and put this layer above. I'm just going to draw in the element that I want to have here that's going to be the center of my wheel. Then I'll just finesse it. Holding the Alt or Option key will allow me to split these handles so they'll travel independently of each other. I'll select this path, edit, copy, turn it off, go back to my caravan layer and choose edit and then paste. Now I want to cut this out, so I'll go to subtract front shape and then I'll go to merge shape components. So this is my edited caravan. Now before I save this again, I'm going to clean up my file. So I'm going to remove all the shape layers that I don't need and I'm going to remove everything else, including my sketch and my fill bottom layer. So this should result in no errors when I get to the Cricut Design Studio. So let's choose File, Export, Export As. Again, it's an SVG. I'll click Export All. I'm going to call this Caravan 2. Let's go back to the Cricut Design Space. Again, click Upload, Upload Image, and let's go and get Caravan 2. This time we've got no errors because there's nothing else in this file except the path that we're using. I'll click Save. This is the one we want to include now, so I'll click on Insert Images. 
and this now is my cutting image and we can look at it and see if it looks the way we want it to look. If we still want to make edits to it, it's very easy to go back to Photoshop and make those edits. I really hope that this video has helped you see how you can create paths for SVG files. For example, cutting out with a Cricut machine from Photoshop. Illustrator is probably your better choice of application, but if you're not familiar with Illustrator and if you know Photoshop, then you can certainly get really good results in Photoshop. But do yourself a favor and work with shapes rather than paths because they're a whole lot more reliable. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the notification bell and click that subscribe button as well. As always, I love you to share my content with others who might be able to use it and please leave a comment if you would and let me know what you're using this video for. And thank you very much to Laborio who asked the question as to how this would be done and I think it's a great topic for a video. So until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.